Welcome to this Vivo to Max series part 2 video. I hope you would have enjoyed the part 1 of Vivo to Max series. Vanakkam, Namaste, I am Dr. Naveen Tiagu, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine enthusiast. Most people finish a workout and then they check one thing, what is my heart rate? Did my heart rate go high? But here is the truth, heart rate is a signal and the, it's not the goal. Then what is the goal? The goal is how your body adapts. And today in this video, I'll show you the science behind slow training, the kind of training that quietly builds your real fitness engine. Stay with me. We have several interesting things in this video. I shall give some example. The example which I see in the clinic more often. Two people start training the same month. Person A trains hard almost every day. He always feels proud about getting destroyed or he always believes more pain, more gain is that kind of attitude person. Person B trains mostly easy and it feels almost too easy for him. After a few weeks, person B notices something very strange. Same pace, low heart rate, same duration, calmer breathing and the next day he feels better after the workouts. So the big question is, does lower heart rate means less fitness? No, lower heart rate, especially who are regular in fitness, means efficiency has improved. It often means your body is doing the same work with less internal cost because the system has adapted. In this video, I am not giving any motivational talk. I am talking about exercise physiology. Straight to the point. You In this video, you will understand the four key things. One, what endurance training changes in heart rate. The big upgrade that is the stroke volume, the maximal cardiac output, the muscle upgrades like capillaries, myoglobin, mitochondria, and the enzymes. What happens in the lungs and why they usually don't limit endurance. This is pure exercise physiology. We'll go into the video. Before we start, just type if you are a runner, cyclist or a walker in the comments. That will that will be that will be useful for me to make further videos which will be very beneficial for the majority of the audience. So here is the most common mistake that people do. People use heart rate like a score. The higher heart rate means better workout, but heart rate is not a score, it is a response. So let's make this very clear. With consistent endurance training, resting heart rate commonly decreases. Highly trained endurance athletes can have resting heart rates around 40 beats per minute or lower and in some cases even lower have been reported in endurance trained. Important clinical point is low resting heart rate in trained people can be normal. But if there are symptoms like fainting, dizziness, chest discomfort, unusual breathlessness, don't ignore it, get evaluated by a doctor. In the fitness journey or a health journey, you know why easy feels easier? Now the change most people feel is the heart rate during submaximal exercise becomes lower with training. The decrease tends to be larger at higher submax intensities. Meaning, same jog, same cycling speed, same effort used to struggle with, now it feels smoother. That's why people say, my easy pace has improved. Yes, that's a real adaptation. Now let's get to the myth. Training does not increase your maximal heart rate. The maximal heart rate usually stays the same or decreases slightly with training. So chasing the highest heart rate is chasing the wrong target. After training, the heart rate often comes down faster during recovery. Use your HR, that's heart rate recovery as a personal trend marker over weeks and not as a competition. Now the most important question is, if your heart rate is lower, what got better? The answer is your heart learned to pump more blood per beat. This is what we call in exercise physiology as stroke volume. The stroke volume means how much blood the heart pumps in one contraction. Let me demonstrate that in a minute. So endurance training increases the stroke volume at rest, at submax exercise and even maximal exercises. So each beat becomes more productive. That's why a trained person can do the same work with fewer beats. Why does the stroke volume increase? I'm demonstrating this uh, with this three tumblers. Imagine this tumbler is the lungs. To avoid confusion in this, so I'm just uh, not going to demonstrate between the lungs and these two. So I'm taking only these two tumblers. The one is heart, another one is the body that requires the blood from the heart, the oxygenated blood from the heart. So imagine the body requires so much amount of blood, so the heart has to pump. So if the heart's capacity is less, it has to pump more. So every time it pumps, it will pour the blood. It means it pumps the blood to the body. 
So what if the capacity of the heart itself is increased? For example, just because the heart feels better and ejects better, so what happens in this key physiology is during aerobic training, the left ventricle fill more completely during diastole. Diastole means the expansion and then receiving of the blood in the heart. The plasma volume expands with training, which allows more blood to enter the ventricles during diastole, increasing the in diastolic volume. That is the volume that gets filled in the heart when the heart expands and receives the blood. Also, the trained heart heart rate is lower at rest and the same absolute workload as so there is more time for diastolic filling. More blood enters this heart, the ventricle more stretch occurs and the more pumping happens. This is the called the Frank Starling mechanism and by this mechanism the contraction force increase. So the left ventricle wall can increase slightly in thickness with endurance training, improving the contractile forces and reducing the end systolic volume. And the decrease in end systolic volume is helped by decrease in peripheral resistance with training. So to sum up, more filling that happens, stronger contraction and the lesser resistance. So the receiving is good, so lesser resistance happens and net effect is a bigger stroke volume. I hope you are able to get the point here. Soon uh, we will get to the formula so that it will be easy for you to understand. Just uh, uh, stay with me. At rest and at the same sub maximal workload, the cardiac output does not change much overall because the stroke volume goes up while the heart rate goes down. But at maximal exercise, the maximal cardiac output increase and that's a major reason we were to max improves. And because the maximal heart rate changes little, the increase in the maximal cardiac output comes mainly from the maximal stroke volume. The books give the typical maximal cardiac output ranges from 14 to 20 liters per minute in untrained individuals, 25 to 35 liters per minute in trained individuals, and 40 liter per minute or more in highly conditioned endurance athletes. Absolute values influenced by the body size, of course. So, VO2 max improvement is not about hitting crazy heart rates daily. It's about building a stronger delivery system. The oxygen consumption of the body depends on two things. One, how much oxygen rich blood you deliver and how much oxygen the muscle extract from the blood. So, VO2 is equal to cardiac output times AV oxygen difference. It's a very important formula. And because cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate, we can write VO2 equals stroke volume times heart rate times AV oxygen difference. Now at maximal effort, VO2 max equals maximal stroke volume times maximum heart rate times maximal AV oxygen difference. Here is a big training takeaway. Because maximal heart rate usually stays the same or decrease slightly with training, increase in VO2 max depends mainly on adaptation in maximal stroke volume and maximal AV oxygen difference. Meaning, your heart delivers more and your muscles extract and use more. That is adaptation. Now we move to the second half of the equation. How do muscles become better at extracting oxygen? This is where slow training builds the engine. The science of slow inside the body, the how the muscles adapt. The training improves muscle blood delivery in four practical ways, four very important practical ways. Number one, more capillaries are created around the muscle fibers. The existing capillaries are recruited and open more effectively. The blood volume increases, supporting flow into capillaries without severely compromising the venous return. Number four, redistribution improves. The blood is directed to active muscles and shunted away from the inactive fibers. Even within a muscle, the blood can be directed toward the more active fibers. So endurance adaptation is not only more heart, it's also smarter delivery. So with longer periods of aerobic training, the number of capillaries may increase by more than 15%. More capillaries mean more exchange of gases, nutrients, heat and metabolic byproducts between the blood and the contracting muscle. And this matters because oxygen has to move from the capillaries to the mitochondria. Improving the capillary density supports oxygen delivery towards the mitochondria. This is especially important as intensity rises. This is why slow training builds infrastructure. Now inside the muscle, what happens? The aerobic training increases muscle myoglobin content by as much as 75 to 80 percentage. Myoglobin helps the transport of oxygen from the cell membrane to the mitochondria. 
The aerobic training increases both the number and size of the mitochondria, increasing the muscle's capacity for oxidative metabolism. And activities of many oxidative enzymes increase with aerobic training. So the muscle becomes better at using oxygen to generate energy. That's your endurance engine. Let's come to the lungs. So what changes and what usually doesn't limit you? In endurance exercises, the respiratory system usually does not limit performance because the ventilation can increase to much greater extent than the cardiovascular function. Uh, so after training, the pulmonary ventilation is essentially unchanged at rest. The ventilation during submax exercises can decrease at the same absolute workload. Maximal pulmonary ventilation can increase after endurance training due to increased tidal volume and respiratory frequency at maximal effort. Pulmonary diffusion at maximal intensity increases because more alveoli are involved with increased blood and increased ventilation at high intensity. So the system adapts, but for most people, the major endurance limitations and gains are usually more about delivery and extraction of oxygen that's than simply bigger lungs. Let me summarize the entire video in one minute. So training reduces the resting heart rate and submaximal heart rate. HR max changes little, stroke volume increases, maximal cardiac output increase, a major reason VO2 max improves. VO2 max depends on maximal stroke volume times maximal heart rate times maximal AV oxygen difference. And since HR max changes little, improvement depends mostly on stroke volume and AV oxygen difference. The muscle adapts, capillaries, myoglobin, mitochondria, oxidative enzymes. Lungs adapt too, but they usually don't limit endurance for most people. So don't chase the highest heart rate, chase the right adaptation. This is the science of slow. If you want the next episode from the, from similar exercise physiology section, comment one letter below A is which stands for HRR, how to use it properly. B, how much VO2 max can improve those response. C, heat versus endurance, time efficient, not magic. I'll choose based on your comments. Do share this with one friend who always trains hard but feels stuck. This one concept changes the way you train. Now, the disclaimer, this video is for education purpose only and does not replace medical advice. If you have chest pain, unexplained, unexplained breathlessness, dizziness, known heart or lung disease, or you take medications that affect heart rate, please consult your physician before starting or changing the exercise program. Any heart rate or zone discussion here is general education and not a personal prescription. We will catch up in the subsequent videos. Goodbye.